So now we're going to start the next one. So we're going to go press new. And again, we're going to go to our inches and we're going to use standard part. Now from here, we're going to, okay, close the light. That just threw me off completely. So we're going to continue now. So now we're going to build our next piece. We're going to be using the revolve tool, the cut feature, and we're going to add some fillets, which are pretty simple to use and change multiple times, unlike when using AutoCAD. So we're going to go to our first sketch, and we're going to go use our plane. Again, opening the origin, we're going to go use either the YZ, XZ, or XY. In this case here, it's telling us to use the YZ. Is it the end of the world if we use the wrong plane? No, because when we bring them in assembly, the only thing you're going to do is just rotate the object around. So it should be fine. So now that we've done that, we're going to go create a sketch. Now, like it shows you, you're just going to create anything similar to the sketch I'm about to show you on the screen. But the important thing to remember, did I do sketch? The important thing to remember is what, guys? Oh, I did two sketches. Let me just get rid of one. Delete this. Add a sketch. Is that when you're drawing it, if we're not giving dimensions, it's get a good idea. Try to go much higher. If you go too low to the bottom here, when we add the dimension of 1.2, it may screw it up and it may pull you below the origin. We need to go above the x axis into this area. So I'm going to draw it using the same method I showed before. We're going to draw the first line up here. So if I look carefully ahead a few pages, you notice that it's supposed to be up 1.2. So I'm going to go like this from here. I'll make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go up along the axis. Then I'm going to go to the left. I'll just do a somewhat OK number. Then go down. <laughs> then go across for number four. Always making sure there's straight lines if possible. Then I'm going to wait until it does this line showing that it connects. And then I'm going to close it. So in total, we should have a total of six lines. We should have one line, two, three, four, five, six. And if you look carefully, they're all pretty much either vertical or horizontal. If you're nervous that they're not, you can always just click on the horizontal constraint and click on the uh, vertical constraint, sorry, in this case, and click on the ones that you think are not straight. And most times, see, it's telling you that the constraint already exists. Now, why is the horizontal vertical and the vertical horizontal? It's because we're not using X and Y. We're playing with the Z and Y. So the orientations are being rotated around. Now that we have this step done, what's the next step we're going to do? We're going to create a center line. So we're going to click on the line, like so. And by clicking on the line, you notice that if you go to the format side, you have one that's called here center line. So I click on the center line. And from the origin, I'm going to click and draw a line going the other direction, like so. So you can tell right away that this is the center line. And you notice that it's already a dark color. Why? Because it's constrained to that line. That's why it's dark as well. The next step we're going to do is we're going to fix line number one. So this line here, we're going to fix it so it doesn't move left or right or up and down. So we're going to go click on this line, and we're going to use the lock command. So now that line becomes locked, which means it cannot move. It's like you nailed it to the ground. Or you put a lock on the locker, you can't move it unless you unlock it. From there, we're going to go do dimension. And we're going to go from, I'll do the smallest one first. So I'll go from here to here. This number here should be 1.2. Oh, wow. I really screwed it up. I did, I did, my numbers were way too big. There we go. And it actually made it down. So it made it pretty good the way I did that one. It was fluky. The next step I'm going to do is do dimension. And again, I go from the center line to the line on top, which makes it a diameter. Because we know we're going to revolve this piece. We're going to click on it like so. And now this we're going to type in 4. Good. The next dimension we're going to do is we're going to change this one over here. We're going to go dimension from the center to this part here, which is line 4. We're going to type in 2.4. You notice how everything looks almost fully constrained except for the last two dimensions. We're going to go dimension from here to here should be 0.8. And our last one should be 2.
Nice. So if we make our dimensions somewhat clean on this end, when we do the sheets later on, it's going to be the same cleanness on the other side. If you're just throwing dimensions on top of each other, then later on you're going to say, crap, I wish I had done this earlier. You can always just grab it. You should be able to grab this dimension. I don't know why I can't move it. Why can't I move you? There we go. Like so. Good. So now I have my thing fully constrained. So, so far we're going really well. We've done it. And we made sure that line one is fixed. And line one goes from the center origin all the way to the top to four. Then line six, we made it two distance. Line, the line is this? Line five, we did it from the top of it all the way to the center at 2.4. The bottom part is 1.2 diameter. And the top one we did at 0.8. And the very, what line is this? Line six, we did it at two. So it's pretty much done. Now that we did that, the next step we're going to do is we're going to revolve it. Do we understand why we have a gap here in between the object? The reason we give this gap is because we want to have a circle in the middle, so a void. If this line here was over here, it would be a solid piece with no hole inside. By having the gap of 1.2 diameter, that means there's going to be a circle of 1.2 diameter inside of it. So now that we're done, we're going to do finish sketch which gives us this lovely profile over here. The next step we're going to do is we're going to go to 3D model and we're going to use the revolve option. Click revolve and right away it worked. If it didn't work then you go axis. Would be, the axis would be this line that you made before and the profile is going to be the profile you made. So you could customize it then. Right away it grabbed it for me because it's smart enough to realize it. If it's OK, we go press OK. If you want it to have an angle, say, 270, you notice that it, it would actually make it 270 all the way around. If I do 90, it's going to cut it just a 90 piece angle. In this case here, we want it to be full. So we go to the full option. Once that's done, we press OK. Now that we have it done, we, we revolved our piece, so everybody should have a piece looking like this. Good. Now we're going to go to the back face. So we're going to go now, and we're going to make a new sketch, and we're going to rotate this to the back face of this object. And we're going to go make a box like it says. So if you go here, you could do, there's two ways of doing it. You can make a box, or if you want to make your life easier, just go do center point rectangle like so, click the middle here, and it's going to make the shape that you need for it to work. So it doesn't have to be exactly on it. It could be surpassing it. Why? Because we only care about the distance in between the cut we're going to make. So if I make it this big, for example, and I go do dimension from so this way to this way, and I go put in 0.472, it's going to go that way. And then all I have to do is just I can stretch it out past it. I go like this, like so, and I can stretch through the piece. I don't have to put a dimension of 4.1 if you want to. Like it shows you, you can. You can just go here, 4.1. But we understand why we don't need a dimension, because we're subtracting beyond. So even if I had left this at 5, or I had left this at 10, it doesn't really affect me because we're cutting into the object. If there's multiple things around us, yes. But because it's our first piece on this on this piece, there's no real effect of doing uh, having to have the exact number. But in this case here, just to make it like you guys, we'll put it at 4.1. Now that we've done that, the next part we're going to use is 3D model. And instead of extruding, we're going to cut it. So we're going to use the extrude cut, which should be over. If no. Yeah, it's an extrude, but you should have it over more. Which second option? Oh, here we go. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. The cut option right over here. And if you notice, it's going the depth that I put. Do we need to go 1? So we should go 0.4. Oh, I pressed OK that fast. And you notice it cut the disc, not the disc, whatever this piece is called later, we're going to call it, right down the the flange right down the middle. Are we clear? So we added a distance of 0.4 and we cut it out. 
now that we've done that, we're going to work on the front of the piece. So we're going to go back to the home button. And we're going to work on the front that's parallel to this object over here. So we go do sketch. And we're going to sketch on this face over here. So now we have it aligned. If, again, if I don't know if it's aligned or not, I go view, visual effects, wireframe, I see that it's parallel to each other. So let's go do shaded again with edges. Hidden lines. I can even do the hidden line one. It doesn't bug me. And now we're going to go make a line. So watch. This one's a little bit trickier, guys. Because we're going to make a sketch with a lines. And we're going to draw the sketch, if I'm not mistaken, on this face here. We're going to go from here. Make sure you're touching to here. Go down for here. And make sure you're touching this again. Like so. So we're going to make this profile here. The next step we're going to do, oh, where is this line here going? Where is this guy going? It's because it has, I'm going to take off the my view. It may be confusing you guys. So let's do back to this. No, this one. So now we have this profile here. The first thing we should do is what? We should automatically put an equal sign so they come equal space. So we go one, two. This way it's going to, this does not look equal at all. So we're going to erase it and redo it again. Let's draw a line from here to here. What's the distance supposed to be around? It's okay. To here to here. So now it's all linked. Now if I press equals, see now it pushed it back nicely in the middle. Then I'm going to go do my dimension of, I think we also have to make the circle afterwards, but we're going to omit that circle right now. Is we're going to go do, what's our dimension? Dimension should be, Dimension is going to be, I don't see my dimension. Anybody see the dimension? Point one is from here to here. So we're going to dimension from here to here. Point one one eight. Oh, that's not a good one then. Oh, hold on. One second. I think I, if I should do this one first. Let me do this one first. Let me just do this first, which should be 0 0.236. 0 0.236. There we go. Now that that's locked, if I go do this dimension here, and I put 0 0.116. Okay, but I put it a 6, but I could change it. 8. There you go. I have the profile that I need to cut through now. All right. So the next thing I could do is I could go do 3D model, extrude again, go to cut, grab my profile I just made, like so. And we're going to go, what's the depth going in? What is it? Sorry? Through all. So we're going to go do through all. So we're going to go distance and we're going to do all. And we're going to cut through that piece. So you see, in the tutorial, it may tell you to draw another circle, but we don't need that extra circle. Because we just cut all the way through, and it cuts into. That's where our key is going to go to lock it into place. Is everybody OK so far? Yeah. Once that is done, we're going to file Save As, as the flange. this and I can continue it right after.